Hello everybody. Welcome back to the Tomcat. And uh get some progress done here. Um that carbon box bar we got high sawed into place in the top forward wings, well fuselage skin or whatever you want to call it, the shell. And uh spent a couple hours yesterday getting all that stuff lined up, glued in. Make sure it's just in the exact perfect spot. So, now that I've got that in the perfect spot, we need to, well, I need to make a jig or an alignment tool to help reinstall every future box bar and all the next ones. So, uh, what it is, I ran to Home Depot, just picked up some one inch, 90 degree aluminum extrusion. It's like four foot of this stuff, it's like eight bucks. It's just cheap stuff, I mean, nothing, nothing expensive. Then I cut four pieces down, five inches in length. Um, the, re the way I got five inches is I just measured from the front of the box to the, to the, the mold flange on the top part of the fuselage, and then it added an extra inch, but this stuff's an inch wide. Did that, cut it, cut it down, around to the, the corners here, and then I just took a file and kind of knocked all the, the burrs off of it so you don't have to worry about cutting yourself. Then, on two of the pieces, I measured out and drilled a set of quarter inch holes, see two pieces, uh, they're just mirrored from each other. And again, I just use a quarter inch drill bit. And for anybody who's ever done any work with aluminum or metal in general, you know when you drill a hole, it, uh, it's always got like a little burr around it. Uh, for those who don't really do a lot of metal work, when you drill out the hole and you have that burr, which you can kind of make it out there and a little raise the lip, to get rid of that, just take a bigger drill bit. Um, doesn't matter what size bigger, just bigger. Stick it in the hole and just one or two turns it by hand. And what that'll do is that'll actually take, get rid of those burrs for you. You do both sides. And there you go, the burr's gone. So that's all you gotta do to get rid of that. Easy peasy. So these two parts here um, will actually bolt to the center bolt portion of the pivot brackets. So since the pivot brackets have five holes, when you have the, the box bar laid up and out of the and you finally pull out the mold, you align your pivot bracket in, you, you clamp it, and then you drill the center hole. Um, later on what I'll do is I'll actually have this, I'll have a, a machine steel plate that I'll just go right over the edge of the box bar and you just use as your as your drill jig instead of using the actual pivot bracket. But um, anyway, you'll sit there and drill the hole in the pivot bracket and that centrally locates that, that box bar, that pivot bracket all in there. And the way I've got it designed up is that box bar is the exact dimension from the, as the, the plugs center carry through spar. So if all goes as planned, it should just be a matter of epoxy it in there, bolt the brackets to it, and you're done. Other than drilling the holes, these four holes, which you do after you set your incidents. The reason I've got this center hole is so you can take the wing pivot bracket, the center hole, and you can twist it however you need to to set your wing incidents so the incidence from one side to the other is perfect and they match. So once you get the incidence set, you cinch that bottom bolt or that center bolt down really, really tight and then you drill using your, your pivot bracket as a guide. You drill your other four holes and then you bolt it down in there and you're good to go. There's a method to the madness. Most of the time I don't know what it is, but there's a reason that I thought about doing it that way for some reason. So now, what the heck's all this about? I mean, how are four pieces of aluminum gonna help 
as an alignment fixture. So we'll bring the video camera and tripod over here. I'm just gonna set you guys up right on top of the fuselage. It's the nice thing about big, big airplanes, you can just put the pod right on top of it. Alright, so you see fuselage. This is that flange I was talking about. I just measured from the, the pivot, the spar, the front face of it, which is about right here, to this flange, and then back another inch. And that's how I got the, the width of that. So now, let me get some bolts. using quarter 20 hardware and a wing nut and you're probably th thinking to yourself how the heck is he gonna get this bolt to that to that box bar if it's a clue to the fuselage top of the fuselage and you can't get anything well again that's where the method to my madness comes in I told you guys I was gonna cut a little hole inspection hole like right here in the the hatch flange area well not only is that not enough, it's just, it's kind of not very practical to put right there. So the next step I did is actually on the bottom of the, the box bar, about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters center line from the, this bolting plate, I drilled two fairly large holes and I just connected it to an oval. So that's about seven eighths of an inch by about an inch and a half, two inches. That way you can get in here and you can inspect your, uh, your attachment hardware inside the box bar without having to well really all you need is an inspection mirror and a flashlight there will be two bulkheads right here so it's gonna be kind of it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt because the landing gear is also in that same area so if you ever have to actually have to get up in there and mess around with it it's not gonna be a fun job and that's why i'm gonna preset the wing incidents on every airplane before they leave the shop that way, hopefully nothing ever has to be done with this whole center box bar. It's done straight out of here. I know it's right. I don't have to worry about it. So, let me get the, the wing nut up in there. And we'll do some work. Unfortunately, I'm not a contortionist. So that's a little difficult. Never said it was going to be easy, did I? Well, you know what? Just a bolt holding it in alignment will work. <laughs> I'm not going to see it. Argue with it all day long. All right. So basically what I'll do is I will take this bracket here and I will mark the bottom of the flange and up a little bit. I'm going to drill two holes in it. That way the holes will go through here and then through the flange so you'll have two bolts that will hold this into place. So let me get my Sharpie. We got that mark. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark down half an inch. And then oh we'll do a inch and a half. I think that'll put us in a pretty good, yeah, that'll work great. And then on the inside here, it's gonna be kind of hard for you guys to get a good shot. I'm gonna mark from the angle bracket about four tenths of an inch. So there's that. Another little trick if you don't have a center punch or an automatic center punch for doing aluminum, or if you don't even know what that is. 
Uh, before you go to start drilling your hole pilot, pilot holes are always great. But I just take a uh, pilot hole as like a smaller hole. But even like a, you want a starter, you want a dimple in aluminum for a, a point for your bit to sit down into. So what I do is I just take some old drill bits that are a little, uh, a little worn out or a little dull, put it where you want it, just tap it with a hammer. And that puts a, a dimple right where you, right where you want your hole to go. And the nice little drill press set up over there, not there, but over there. I'm guessing. I can't see. Yeah. Zoom in. And yeah, we'll see if I can't give you guys a, a shot of me drilling. Drilling stuff. Yes, I know I should be clamping this down so it doesn't run out of my hand, but I'm going to be lazy. And just use light pressure to hold it in. Get back down over here. I'm making y'all sick yet? If so, quit whining. <laughs> All right, drill bit deeper again. Shelf. Get a little clamp here to hold it all together. Hopefully this one will be small enough to fit. <laughs> Take that all there. Clamped in, what I'll do is take the drill, drill that hole. And you notice I haven't done anything down here other than clamp it together. The reason why is I want to get this, both the pieces firmly attached before I do anything. That way they won't move, so they'll be nice and tightly fit everywhere you want it to be every time. And I'm also using a drill bit that is exactly a quarter of an inch. I'm not oversizing the, the holes at all. The reason I'm not oversizing them is because, again, I want a very nice tight fit. You don't want the hole to be a little loose Granted, that little bit of looseness probably wouldn't affect anything dramatically, but if you're going to do it, might as well do it right. I've got some other cool little nuts that I found that I've been, I use on the, uh, that carbon spar mold.
that I think a lot of people would be interested in seeing. They're uh, a little expensive. I think there were 10 or 20 bucks for 10 or 20, I can't remember. 10 or 10 bucks for 10, so about a dollar a piece. But uh, they work awesome. If they weren't so dang expensive, I'd put them on everything on this airplane or on these set of molds. I might still do it just because they are that great. All right. So now that those are bolted in nice and tight, I'm gonna stop the video and start it back up, try and keep these things a little short. So we'll see you guys back here in a minute.